My name is Steven Gritzy, uh, born and raised in New Jersey. Growing up, I was a uh, chubby, deaf kid, short, <laughs> shortest of the bunch. My dad, you know, he wasn't around. My mom was a single mom. She had two, three jobs at some points. And, uh, you know, I, I couldn't hear a lot of the conversations growing up because I'm deaf. So it kind of kept me on the outer skirts of social circles or whatever. All that stuff, it, it really affects you growing up. And, uh, you know, keeping it in was probably my worst mistake. Um, I, I wish now that I would have talked about any of the stuff. I don't know why I kept it in. It eats you alive. It's just, uh, you feel like there is no other option but to say, this is it. I can't take it no more. I tried going to the doctor, they tried to prescribe me some pills and it just wasn't doing anything, so I just said, forget it. And uh, now I'm doing ketamine treatments. Millions of Americans suffer from depression, and many of them don't respond to traditional treatments like antidepressants. What was once known as an animal tranquilizer and even a party drug is now proving to be an effective treatment Steven Gritzi is 28, and he's been suffering from depression for most of his life. Hey, hey what's up, Steven? Hey, what's going How's on, it bud? going, man? It's good to see you. Thanks, man. Thanks for Come having me over. In your head, is there a phase of your life before ketamine treatment and a phase after? Uh, I tried traditional doctor, you know, um, you know, getting on like a couple pills for my anxiety and stuff. I didn't like it. Um, I just didn't like what it did and how it made me feel. What, what did it do? How did it make you feel? I just felt sick to my stomach all the time. It was just like, yeah, no, I'm not going to do this. And there's got to be some other way to do it. A year ago, what was an average day like for you dealing with depression? It's normal for someone to be depressed. But it's, it's how deep that depression goes and, and where that depression came from. For me, it's come from my childhood. I mean, uh, you know, who... How do you tell your parents that you were raped? You know what I mean? I'm 12, 13 years old. What am I gonna do? Shut down. Everything from that moment on was sucked away from me. So, yeah, every day. Every day I wake up and something's wrong, something's gonna go wrong, this is gonna happen, you know? Every single day. But the difference now is I don't let it overtake me. I don't shut down anymore. Instead of me being suicidal or thinking of suicidal, I have to strength to deal with it in some shape or form. Once I had the first three or four or five treatments, that motivation to stay alive, that motivation to move and do things or get things done came to life. I'm here at the Ketamine Treatment Center of Princeton, New Jersey, and this is where psychiatrist Dr. Stephen Levine has been treating patients since 2011. He typically sees 10 to 12 patients a day, and today, Stephen is going to be receiving a ketamine infusion. What exactly is ketamine doing in your brain, in your body? So most of the focus has been on its effects on what's called the glutamate system. Ketamine can produce these proteins that repair connections help form new ones, reroute around areas of damage. It's a process called synaptic plasticity. So that's one thing that ketamine does, and that's part, perhaps, of, of how it treats depression. There's also the experience during ketamine. And I think we generally devalue experiential treatments or how experiences change us. And for some people, that may be very important. So how you doing? Doing good, doing good. Uh, a little overdue, you know, the last couple of days. Definitely good to be back here and to get my infusion. You know, are there thoughts on your mind right now or questions as far as looking forward? I think the only concern is just how long, you know, will I do the treatments? I think we're on 14, 15 now. I think today's number 14, yeah. 14 today. So I thought I was going to be done at like 5 or 8, you know. So I guess I get fearful that, you know, if they decide that ketamine is destroying the world one day, that your practices would go out, then what do I do? You know what I mean? Because it's helped me. So I obviously want to continue. Yeah, so I guess there's two domains with that, right? There's the course of your own treatment in the near term and more distant term. 
And then there's what's going to be the ultimate fate of the use of ketamine for depression, you know, the, this type of use of ketamine. For you, you know, of course, one of the things that we're trying to do over the near term is, is to have you kind of feel like you're sailing on your own, that this treatment is there for you as a backup if you need it. Right. You know, ketamine, like anything else, isn't a magic bullet. I never think of ketamine right. as the answer. Right. right. It's a tool. Right, absolutely. Well, not one tool works for everybody, so. Exactly. So Stephen, would you say that you actually enjoy undergoing the treatments? Um, not when you're getting stuck with needles. <laughs> oh, come on. You didn't <laughs> no, even no, 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 no,
you know, what is the right amount to give? What is too much to give? Is there any right amount that's safe? Mm -hmm. And those are, those are my biggest concerns when I'm treating patients, and that's what I always warn them about, is we really don't know how safe this is long term, and we really don't know how effective this will be long term. Over the last decade, Stephen's mother witnessed her son's multiple suicide attempts, but she has only recently learned about Stephen's experimental treatment since he chose to keep it a secret due to the stigma around ketamine. How did you feel when you first heard that Stephen was undergoing these treatments and then again, you know, when you found out that they were somewhat effective for him? It's scary. Um, I'm concerned. It's a drug. Um, that it's addicting. But if it's helping him, anything that's going to help my son is going gonna, is gonna to be the best thing for him. Does it still scare you at all? Or, you know, after undergoing some treatments, does it seem more like a treatment for what you have? After the treatments, my life kind of slows down. I get to think about things a little bit more. I don't have to be so hyper about things. And it definitely, without a doubt, keeps the chatter, the flashbacks, just the morbid thoughts that I had away. And that's why I think I am more supportive of it because it helps me have a little bit more of a um, comfort knowing that that's helping you function better as a person in society. In terms of the other people in your family, what do they know about Stephen's depression and about the ketamine infusions? Even family members um, are judgmental. Yeah. And he's my son, and I want to do anything, anything that, if it helps my son, I'm, I'm for it. I may not understand it fully, and I don't care that I don't. I see the results, and that's what counts. Although ketamine is FDA approved as an anesthetic, it's not approved as a psychiatric treatment, which means that ketamine infusion therapy is not covered by most insurance companies. So these ketamine treatments that you do here are not something that can be covered by most people's insurance, right? Yeah, so most people do assume that they would not be able to get any insurance coverage for having ketamine treatment. Our patients who see us, because all of our centers are run by psychiatrists. People meet with psychiatrists before and after every treatment. We are able to give people bills that reflect the psychiatry office visit component of their visit. So while the ketamine infusion itself is not covered, our care is. And so it's not a completely uncovered service. Each infusion costs Stephen $450. He's spent over $6,000 on treatment so far and doesn't know how many more he'll need. How do you feel after that treatment? A huge difference. Yeah? A huge difference. Do you feel like you're getting progressively better, or is it like kind of like you're now you're anticipating your next treatment? It's getting better. If I can do one infusion every 30 days instead of every three weeks, I take that as an improvement. And so what are you going to do now, I mean, that you weren't able to do before, you know, on a Wednesday? Well, whatever I want. That's the beauty of it. I'm not incapacitated anymore. Well, I'm really happy you're getting better, man. You know, you've been through a lot of stuff, you know, really difficult times in your life, and you found something that works for you. And congrats on that, man. I'm really happy that we got to <laughs> After talking to Steven and hearing about his issues and how ketamine infusion treatments have helped him, I also discovered that there's a number of depression and anxiety-related illnesses that come from PTSD. I actually myself was diagnosed with PTSD about 10 years ago, so I thought maybe I'll try one of these ketamine infusion treatments here at Dr. Levine's office. So Dr. Levine, this is the consultation you typically have with your patients when you're assessing whether or not they should receive ketamine infusion treatments, is that right? That's right. And so essentially I want to get a sense of you, of your story, of you know, why you might be coming in for treatment, 
whether there's appropriate indications to have this, if there's any contraindications that would say we shouldn't do this. So in terms of considering having this treatment today, uh, can you tell me a bit about your experience? Um, you know, I wouldn't consider myself to be a depressed guy. You know, overall, I think my moods are generally positive. However, I, about 10 years ago, um, I was diagnosed with PTSD because of an incident where a mugger stabbed me in the throat. My arm was paralyzed for a while. And it's something that I think I, I still feel uh, anxious from at times. If this is something that can help me dissociate from that post-traumatic stress, I think that would be really helpful. Something I hear commonly from people who have trauma, who have this treatment, is that oftentimes they're able to step apart from themselves in a way that they're able to look at their trauma in a more objective, less emotional way, which in some sense is like an advanced exposure therapy. Okay, cool. I think I'm ready. All right, let's do it. I'm going to put the ketamine in. So you are off and running here. It usually takes about 20 minutes or so before you start feeling it. OK. All right? Yeah, Can I'm good. feel a little relaxed first, or we'll see. We'll see what happens. So I'm definitely starting to feel some of the effects of the ketamine. Um, it's making me a little bit drowsy, and I feel kind of like a warm sensation, you know, behind my ears. Um, wow, dude, yeah, no, it's like, it's like a pretty, pretty strong, like, psychoactive effect, I would say. Yeah, well, right. I'm pretty fucked up from this. <laughs> Usually at the 40 minute mark is when he's at the height of his infusion, mm -hmm. the peak of it. So you still have a little more oh, yeah? to go up. The best thing to do is probably just keep your eyes closed and just try to relax and not talk through it. Okay. You know, if that cool. might help. Mm. That feels it feels good now. It feels like it's like reached like some kind of like hmm, plateau. The interesting thing is the uniformity between like the mental effect and the body effect of this stuff, right? This effect is actually doing something to your brain chemistry or to your body that could actually help you to cope with the realities of life or, or whatever, right? The realization I'm having on this is that, like, that emotion doesn't have, like, this, like, physicality, right, in the world. That there is a distinct difference between what's tangible and what's intangible. It lets you kind of encapsulate all those things in your life, right? All your feelings, your, you know, your relationships, your upbringing, all those other things, like, sort of ball into one thing, and you sort of set it over there. And you're just walking around, and you're just looking at them and you don't have an emotional reaction or attachment or something to each image or each experience that you see. Imagine your life as a movie. If you're in that movie, you're just having the experience the whole time. You're that character who's just like, you know, being swayed left and right by all the things that are happening in that story, right? But if you're in the audience, if you could watch your own movie, right? If you could watch the movie of your life, and judge every aspect of it, right, without any sort of emotional reaction. That's what this is like. If I had gone through what Steven had gone through, I can imagine that going through something like this, just removing yourself from that perspective that's so, so damaged, you know, at some point, could probably be really helpful. I think I'm beginning to perhaps understand, you know, what this does for your patients, man. That really is an incredible experience. Have you tried this? I haven't. Just in general, for like, just for that, ex the experience, you know, like or just to look at my thoughts in a different way like that was so incredibly therapeutic, man.
I'm pretty confident that ketamine treatments have contributed to me being here today, a mass majority of it. Because even though you grow older and you get wiser, there's still that deep emptiness inside that like I couldn't explain that bothers you and ruins you from inside and it just shuts you down. And I think because I've been able to subdue a lot of that and kill the chatter per se, it's allowed me to function and be more happy and not have to think like that, actually. Patients suffering from depression are in extreme pain. And unfortunately, many of our treatments right now, while quite effective for many people, leaves about a third of the patients that really aren't experiencing tremendous benefit. So there really is what we would call a great unmet need for new medications. Ketamine offers that hope to people. I've seen my own patients, several of them that said it has changed their life. It's been life-saving. So I don't think it's fair not to make this treatment available to people. On the flip side, if we are going to offer this, let's offer it in the safest setting we can do it in, the most responsible way of developing it, and in a way where we're learning from it. We're collecting data and sharing our data.